Right, we're nearly coming to the end of the show. Nearly coming to the end of the show. Um, what have I got to say? Oh, right, yeah, before we go to Sue's, and, Sue's with the news, um, I want to really get some love in this room for the wonderful Tony Roberts. Come on. No, you guys are way too excited for my bit. <laughs> You're gonna calm, just calm right down. Lower your expectations, we'll have a much better time. <laughs> so I'm the best magician in my family. According to my mum, <laughs> evidently my sister's the second best, because whenever she gets pregnant, she makes her father disappear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, I can say that. I got five sisters. I can piss one off at a time, I got plenty. Five, dude. Got no brothers. Hand-me-downs were a drag. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do to women's underwear, they never look like speedos. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm stalling. Because this is quite a prestigious gig, we're on the tally and everything. So I wanted to look good, so at the last minute, I changed my mind on my jacket. And I'm a card magician. And I left my cards in the other jacket. <laughs> so I'm a bit fucked. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that you guys have a really good imagination. <laughs> cool. So I'm gonna get somebody down with a really good imagination. Um, just a quick volunteer, somebody wants prepared to come down. Look, there's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, ladies and gentlemen, that was, you can do that for me, because I don't have an ego, but this is her first time on TV, so don't be nervous. Yeah. Hi, Sadie. It's okay, relax. I'll treat you like a princess, I promise. And that doesn't mean that I'll get really drunk and drive you fast through a tunnel. I'll just look after you. <laughs> oh, come on, this is Edinburgh. <laughs> what, too soon? <laughs> What's your name, gorgeous? Suzanne. Suzanne, well, that was my name when I was a little girl. We're gonna bond, that'll be fine. Um, thank you, Bangkok. Um, Suzanne, relax, you can do nothing wrong. Okay. Just absolutely relax. Okay, I'm gonna use your imagination. Um, I've got an imaginary purse. Cool. You look worried, relax, you can't do anything wrong. This is inside the imaginary purse is an imaginary pack of cards. Could you take them and remove them from the box, please? Could I have the box? Cool, okay. Now, please don't shuffle them, I'll put them in a special order. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, if you can imagine there's a table in front of us that's about this high, could you put the cards face up on the table for me and spread them out? Now, could you separate them into red and black for me? No. No. Okay. Have you ever helped a magician before? Because <laughs> you're not helping one now. Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay, oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow, is your bedroom as untidy as your imagination? <laughs> and can I find out? No, okay. So, um, could you pick up the red pile for me? And separate those into hearts and diamonds. Um, could you pick up the black pile for me? Separate them into spades and clubs. I need a bigger table. That's okay. It's your imagination. You can make it bigger if you like. <laughs> and you're not the first woman that said that to me. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so could you pick up the hearts for me and place them here? Uh, pick up the spades and place them beside the hearts. The diamonds beside the spades. Clubs beside the diamonds. Cool. Now, Suzanne, remember this is entirely in your imagination, okay? I'll just do a little recap for you. You've got hearts, spades, diamonds clubs. Don't think about it, put your hand over one pile. What did you choose? Hearts. Happy with hearts? Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm going to take the spades and I'm going to put the spades away. Okay? I'm going to take the diamonds and I'm going to put the diamonds away. I'm going to take the clubs and I'm going to put the clubs away. Okay. Okay, could you spread the hearts out across the table? Now there are 13 cards in the suit of hearts. Ace to king. Don't think about it, reach in and take out a single card. Cool. I'm going to put the rest away. What card did you choose? Six of the hearts. six of hearts. You happy with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't change your mind. Could you show everybody the six, please? <laughs> now, could you take the six and fold it in half? And then fold it in half again. Now, remembering, Suzanne, that this is an imaginary card out of an imaginary purse that you simply imagined. Could you take the imaginary six of hearts and place it inside the purse? I'm going to close the purse and click my fingers. I'm now going to open the purse and take out a single real card. 
Wouldn't it be kind of cool it be? if a single real card was actually the six of hearts? Wow. Uh, I'll give the lady a huge round of applause. I couldn't do that without her. Thank you. That was magic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I think so. Oh, I, yeah. I feel like I've used too, too many mics. Hello. Hi. That was amazing. Thank you. That's good. How long have you been doing magic for? Um, it was my 40th birthday present to myself. So 11 years. That's, that's not that long, really, if you think about no, it. No, I, I walked away from a six-figure income and became a busker. I became a street performer. What? 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 Why? <laughs> Why? Because I didn't like the person I became. It, it, it cost me my second wife. It cost me 80 to 100 hours a week of my life. Um, it cost me my sobriety. I started using recreational drugs at quite a professional level. And I just... <laughs> And I just didn't like the person I became. I wanted to make people laugh. And a decade ago, and probably from a decade ago forward, um, it really feels like we're divided as a race. Uh, human beings are divided. And the one thing that unifies people, and this, this friend shows it, is laughter. And I've now got two lovely kids, and I've raised a family on it, and we live in London. Yeah, so it's good to be back in Europe. Cheers. <laughs> I, got, I, got to, I got to say, I'm... I'm Australian, yeah. right? Um, but I'm English on my mother's side, <laughs> and I'm Italian by a friend of my father's. Yeah. <laughs> so Brexit confused me because I feel like I came here and stole my own job. So did you? So you got sober when you went into magic? Is that? Um, I got sober before I left the motor industry. The motor industry was a very high pressure industry. Yeah. Um, and I'd, and I'd, I'd done it for 14 or 15 years. And it really, to, to achieve at a high level within that industry, you have to become a certain type of person. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it came down to a simple point. Um, my training was to, to make people personally responsible, and that's how you sell it. So it's a, I won't go into a detail. But I was at a restaurant, and I made the waitress cry. And I wasn't an asshole. I wasn't nasty. It was just your demeanor. It, it was just my training. Um, and I stepped back from that moment. Because that's, that's all right if you're doing it to a head of a corporation. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, you're selling multiple cars to somebody who runs a business or you're dealing with a car salesman. But somebody who's 18 and just out of, and, and doing a part-time job out of university. And it really woke me up to not wanting to be that person anymore. Was that a defining moment where you just went? That was, that was, there's been about four defining moments, but that was it. And a very good friend of mine I'd known for 20 years, I sat on a poker table um, and he showed me had, had, had what I considered my first card illusion. I'd seen card tricks, but he did. He's amazing. And it's the opening of my show. And now everywhere I go, I take cards with me because I travel a lot. Yeah. 12 countries now, four to different buy friends. To buy friends with your tricks. No, no, they can buy me drinks. That's, that's just that's great. Place. My show is actually like a 10 year pub crawl condensed into an hour. <laughs> Where can people see you? Um, I'm at the, the Assembly Roxy. It's nice. a lovely little 60 seater. It's rake seating. It's perfect intimate venue for my card magic. And it is what it says on the tin, but I'll just tell you the story from basically from boardroom to busker. Um, the, the, the magic is incidental, but it's an important part of the show, but it's me telling my story. I've got to rush you. Thank you so much. Give it up for Tony Roberts. Thank you. Right, before we go over to our very own Suze with the news, I just want to tell that you can get in touch with us uh, on YouTube, SBC, Edfest Live, search us there, Twitter, Edfest underscore live, and we're on Sky 266, daily 1.30 to 2.30. We're recording at the Newtown Theatre on George Street. But now, put your hands together for the wonderful Suze with the news. I'm Suze with the news, news with Suze. That was kind of amazing magic. I was wondering if you could try to do that with my life. Uh, Would you be able to help basically fix it all? Drinks. Like what? Um, my well, debt? Yeah, well, I don't know about your debt. Yeah, maybe. Get my boss to pay me? Yeah, that would work. I could get you, well, that's my old life, I could get your boss to pay you. Bring my cat back from the dead? I won't hurt him, I'll hurt those close to him. Uh, Bring well, your cat I mean, back. Maybe Have you not, lost eh? a cat? Maybe not today, yeah. My cat miss died a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Um, and then just it's all been going from bad to worse from here. <laughs> I've been given like about three final warnings on this job. So I'm the most negative news reader people have ever met. Um, apparently I need to turn my frown upside down um, and be like other newsreaders, you know? <laughs> 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 so, um, 
So today I'm only going to read the happy, positive stories from the news. Does that sound good? Because there's so much tragedy in the world, isn't there? <laughs> so, um, right, let's get on with happy, happy, happy stories. <clears throat> Death gang thug slashes his own throat in street with broken bottle. Well, it's not a great start, is it? I'll find something. Holiday teen is fear drowned. Uh, why am I still being billed for a mobile phone that I sent back last September? I don't know. <laughs> Cancer risk of women who fail to lose weight. Well, that's fine with me because I haven't eaten for four days, so that's not going to be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else on Aries? Have we got an Aries in the room? Just me? Right. Uh, the gossips are out and it's not all made up. Look for the half-truths that can alert you to changes coming your way, Aries. But how do you know what's real and what isn't? You don't. But you have to have a contingency plan. So I'm going to keep applying for more jobs because apparently I'm not very good at this one. <laughs> That's all I can take today. Back to you. Give it up for Susan the News. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe it, but we are at the end of the show. Have you had fun, studio audience? <laughs> Look, I've really enjoyed hosting today's show. My name's Eleanor Conway. I'm doing a debut show uh, today uh, and uh, every day until the 28th. It's called Walk of Shame. It's been getting four stars and selling out. It's about sex, sambuca and sobriety and the modern addict within us all. Please come and see me. Frankenstein's 1945 <laughs> every day. Now, I hope you've enjoyed our mix of music, humour and all the bits in between. Catch us tomorrow. We'll be here at 1.30 at the Newtown Theatre on George Street. Give it up for all the guests you've seen today. <laughs> Action.